Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to the Book Refuge and um, pardon me for a couple of things. I've been sick for the last three days, had an ear infection two days ago. Um, I'm feeling much better, I still sound kind of congested, but it's time to film and I'm excited to do it. Um, I had asked for some ideas for some videos just like a couple days ago, planning to film them and then bam! I did not get up off the couch for the last two days and that's okay that happens but I did during that time prep the videos I want to film so now we're ready to go because it's time to get some videos in the tank right so I'm very excited to do a couple of these um, this one I'm doing today um, is kind of an updated version of one I've done a couple times before but I keep getting asked to do it and usually that means people aren't finding the older video anymore which is totally fine I'm happy to uh, recycle a little bit of content and update it you know so mixed in with these older woman younger man romances are some that I definitely have talked about before um, there are also some that people probably are very familiar with and are the ones that make you want more of them right and that's kind of what I love about recommendations videos and why I myself always try to have five to ten recommendations in a video and I haven't talked about this in a long time but back when I was first getting into romance booktube there was of course recommendation videos there always have been recommendation videos but they usually only had maybe like five recs in them um, and so maybe from each video I would find like one recommendation you know um, which is still it's a recommendation and it's good but I don't like to make a video unless I have you know, unless it's one of my oddly specifics, right, and I'll make a video that has like five recommendations with with also books that I want to read, I just really like to make sure I'm bringing you lots of options. So with this one, if you are a longtime viewer, I've talked about these books multiple times. I mean, that's how it is for any video I do if people are longtime viewers it's been around for them. Um, but hopefully there are some older ones that maybe people didn't think about and also some newer ones or some odd ones that people don't even know. So an older woman, younger man romance. I think this is one of the ones that doesn't need to be explained too much. These are age gaps where the woman is older. Um, these, I don't know, these just work for me. And of course they work even more as I myself am, uh, I don't like saying aging, but as I am not a spring chicken of 18 anymore, I appreciate seeing more mature women um, represented well in a uh, romance. You know, I just, I just am. And I guess I, I don't feel like I'm mature, but I probably am in uh, standards compared to other people, right? It's all a sliding scale. Um, and then one more time, I'll say I have two other of these videos I filmed already. So I put those up there um, for you guys to to watch after this video if you want. Um, so if there are some that aren't mentioned, I probably mentioned them in them. I, like I know for sure I kept some of the most popular ones off of this list since it is like a re do in some ways. So anyway, um, and last, before, before, without further ado, if you'd give this video a like and subscribe to my channel, I put up recommendation videos and other kinds of videos like this three to four times a week, and it's very helpful to me if you like the channel, um, the engagement. I can't be a slouch about it. It's important. So let's go through this list, and again, we'll start with the one um, that will probably uh, not surprise anyone is on here, right? Um, and that is Mercy by Sarah Kate. We'll just start with this one. This is book four in the Salacious Players Club. This one has Maggie, who is one of the part owners in the club. And then we have Bo, who is the son of the hero from Praise, or um, Emerson. And him and his son are like semi estranged from each other. And it definitely didn't help when Emerson started dating Bo's ex-girlfriend because Bo couldn't get his shit together. So Bo is a bit of a brat. And he also has kind of shunned kink and thought his dad was really gross and pervy for being into it and everything, which I mean, honestly, I wouldn't want to know the sex stuff my parents are into anyway, but still, he's a bit of a prat. Um, but he does have some sweet redeeming qualities, um, particularly in regards to Charlie's younger sister. It's, that's really beautiful. Um, so anyway, Maggie and Bo end up both filling out this kink quiz, and they end up figuring out who the other person is through a meetup, and they're just like, oh, well, we can't do anything, but they're like, but this might be fun to try out together. So it, it turns into that kind of a thing. Um, it is Maggie learning how to be a dominant and him learning how to be a sub. Like, they're both learning this together, and I thought that that offered a lot of great aspects. There are so many, like, there is, like, some good boy happening here, so there's, like, some praise 
elements in this one as well. There is pegging, there is um, edging, there is overindulgent. Like this has a lot of beautiful kink in the way that Sarah Kate does. So definitely check this one out. Now, one that I also like to recommend by Sarah Kate that recently I think kind of gets forgotten a little bit because of Mercy is actually Burn For Me. And this is one of the one of the first few books that I read by Sarah Kate, actually, and this one is a student teacher. It's a student teacher at a college, um, but it's very interesting because the heroine in this one, I think her name is Everly. Is this Everly? Because I remember this having a name that I know. Yeah, it is. The heroine's name is Ev Everly, and the hero's name is Cullen, and Cullen, his father is actually a criminal, and Everly was part of, like, she was a journalist who, like, got her his dad put in prison for what he was doing and it put Colin in um like his his mother ended up committing suicide from the shame of it and he ended up in the hands of his uncle who was very abusive to him so he's going to college now he ends up being in one of Everly's classes and he decides he wants to get revenge for how he sees it as she's ruined his family. Now, what I really love about this one is it's like, it's a bit of like a bully slash stalker scenario, but also Everly sees this, you know, young man and does really feel guilty that though she doesn't regret, you know, getting, um, getting Colin's dad arrested because he was a bad dude, she does regret the fallout of what happened to Colin. So she does give him more leniency than she otherwise would because one of the things about this one is that Everly has the power to kind of make it stop what he's doing to her because people would believe her that he's doing this. You know, this isn't the case of like bullying where like he has all this power. Like really the only power Cullen has is the power that she gives him and she does kind of like being tortured by him just a little bit. So this is lots of fun. This has some, you know, good, fun, naughty stuff in it. And I just, I really enjoyed this one. And this was, I'd read, I think one Sarah Kate before this one came across me and this is what really made me excited for her and then when praise came around I was like I gotta read these all so love that um then one of my other favorite AGFs this one is much darker than either of those two um and that's gonna be Deliver by Pam Godwin um I'll actually put up a picture of Deliver but I just love showing off my beautiful bind up this is a bind up of Deliver Vanquish and um Disclaim but Deliver Here's this creepy photo, right? This book is free. Pam always keeps this book free. This one is, this whole series is about, um, uh, sex slaves. Uh, and where the series starts is not where it ends by any means, but that is the content we're dealing with. We're dealing with human trafficking in this series. And it starts with Liv, um, who herself had been human trafficked. And now she works for the people who ha had kidnapped her forcibly works for them. But I won't explain how that all works. But I just want to put a little bit of thing like she isn't as sadistic as she will seem. Like she has a reason why she's having to do this. But her and her partner Van are put up to needing to procure um, very specific targets and then train them and break them into submission and then bring them to their buyer. So they get charged with finding a male virgin who is trained to take a man basically is what it's supposed to be. But, um, yeah. And so they target Josh, who is a, he's going to this Christian college. He's going to become a pastor. He's a football star. He's, he's beautiful, perfect and sweet. And he gets kidnapped after a football game. He gets kidnapped by Liv and Liv takes him to this place where they're going to train him. And she begins to train him and break him. And there are a lot of very dark things that happen, but through it all, Josh refuses to see Liv as anything, but someone who's broken just like him and that he wants to save her as well. And not in the cheesy way it sounds. Like this, this boy, this sweet boy goes through so much and Liv is being forced to do it to him. But she is a tiny bit of a sadist too. Like she is a dom of him. And so she does also enjoy some of the things she's doing. But she's been like 
her brain's been twisted. Like everybody in this series, their brain's been twisted. But I love this series. And if you can get through this book in the way that Pam Godwin does with so many things, she's going to hook you in and just take you on a ride because this series is epic. It is so epic. And yeah, it's amazing. I don't want to spoil anything. All righty. Okay, let's go through these. So then I have one. This was one that I had read on suggestion of a viewer, uh, I think a year and a half ago or so. I mean, this is an older book. This one is actually from, I think, 1993. Let me check. Yeah, because this came out the year I was born. So it's 30 this year. Um, but it, it's a contemporary book, but like it's set in like the 90s. So it will feel almost historical, kind of. It definitely does. Um, but this is about Johnny Harris who went to jail for murder. And so he did 10 years in prison. And then there's Rachel Grant, who was his teacher. Now she's not a lot of years older than him because she was a young teacher when he was near the end of high school. So if you think of that, like, I think she's only like five or seven years older than him. But when he gets out of prison, she's the one he calls to give him a ride back to town. And he also ends up like being her tenant because this small town but like believes that he did this murder and that he had like raped and murdered this girl. That's what the town believes. But she like gets him a job at her family's uh, business, which is like a hardware store. And she gives him a place to live and she like she's always believed that he was innocent. Um, and so she's also from this very, like, her family's a little bit, like, her mom's a little bit snooty. I think it's interesting because, like, she's still able to, like, find him a job and things like that. But she starts spending a lot of time with Johnny and things definitely heat up. So I really enjoyed this book. It was very different from, you know, things that I read. This was very steamy. Johnny is an ex-con. He's a bad boy. And I feel like this is the type of book that if it had been written now, people would just like gobble it up. Um, it does have some of its traits of the time. Speaking of like some terms that are used and things. However, something I really liked is that this author was like very aware of the time she was living in because there are some things that get said where she within the book is like, we don't call people that. Like, what are you doing? And I don't know. I appreciated it a lot that we were like calling out things even in a book that was written in 1993. really like that. Then this is one of the ones that I know is a repeat. I talk about this one all the time and I don't care. I'll bring it up again. That is Thief of Shadows by Elizabeth Hoyt. This is book four in the Main Lane series. You can just start with this book if you want to. You could, because I know people are going to ask me. I know people are going to ask me. Should you just start with this book? Probably not. You probably should read well, I've never even read book two, but you probably should read books one and three um, because they are about the siblings of the hero in this one. But this is, I always want to say it's its Victorian Batman, but that's wrong. I think it is Elizabeth, I think it's like Edwardian, um, it's like Edwardian Batman or something. It's, I won't even tell you the year because people are going to call it Either way, it is historical Batman. We'll call it that. It's historical Batman. There is this creature called the ghost, not a creature. There's this man who's called the ghost of St. Giles and he goes about trying to protect St. Giles, which is a very like poor, um, poverty laden area in England. And he disguises himself in a domino, which is a mask. And, um, he's been like helping people out. And then we have our heroine, Lady Isabel Beckenhall, um, and she is this, like, children, this wayward children's home, like, um, she's on, like, a board of ladies who have a charity for it. And then we have Winter, who, aka, like, he is the ghost of St. Giles, um, and he is the man who, like, runs the home for foundling children, and he's very, like, buttoned up and proper from what we see. He seems almost like a man of God type of thing, and he's a virgin, and he's in his, like, early 20s, and he has always believed that he could only have two of three things in his life. He could have a wife and his own kids, he could be there for the kids of the foundling home, or he'd be the ghost of St. Giles. And he has chosen to be the ghost of St. Giles and be there for the foundling children. And so he's really like stayed obviously very um, 
away from women as much as he can because he doesn't want to be tempted. But his position as leader of the home is being threatened because he's 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 not up to scratch. Like he's not able to woo and get donations and like convince people to donate. And like, this is a charity and he needs that. And so this ladies society, they are like, okay, either he needs to get up to scratch or we need to find someone else because we want these kids to be taken care of and his ego needs to step out of the way and whatever. And so Lady Isabella, who is a widow, she gets um, kind of volunteered to do that. And the chemistry is crazy. Okay. The chemistry is crazy. And, um, yeah, I just love these two. Um, this one does have some trigger warnings. I know I haven't mentioned them for any of the others, but this one has a trigger warning for, um, infertility and like loss of pregnancies, um, in a heroine's past that was very affecting. It's what made this book so powerful to me. Um, but winter, he may seem like quiet and demure sometimes, but the dude is a boss. And then when he falls for this woman, he goes all in. It's fantastic. He's so sexy. Some of the lines in this book just make me swoon so hard. This was one of my favorite books of 2021, 2020, 2020. I can't remember which year, but it was in my top books of that year. Ugh. And then I have another historical to share with you, and this is Melissa and the Vicar by S.M. LaViolette, a.k.a. Minerva Spencer, and this is her Seducer series, which is is three books, and each one is about someone who was a sex worker, um, either, like, currently or previously, and I really enjoyed that. I um, mean, this one is about Melissa Griffin, who she had been running an exclusive brothel. Um, she obviously had been a prostitute before she was running it, and she's very sick. And so her doctor says, you need to get out of London. You need to get away from the busyness. You need to take a break from what you're doing or you're going to die young. Would you like to die young or would you like to get better? And she says, no. So she takes one, her and one of the, one of her servants and she goes to stay in this really quiet, relaxing country estate. Um, and she starts falling for the town's gorgeous young vicar. And he's a virgin and he's a proper man of God. But again, he's no slouch. And when he sees a woman that he wants, he doesn't care about her past. He can tell she's hiding secrets, but he wants her. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to have you. And he is willing to be a little bit devious. He's willing to be a little bit devious to do it. And I just really appreciated this book. So yeah, they were definitely two people who are not supposed to be together, but the chemistry just won't stop. And they're amazing. I also have, this is another student teacher. This is A Lesson in Blackmail by Katie Robichaud. I mean, this is also one, let me clarify, it's kind of, she's kind of a teacher. She's actually a lab librarian at this prep school that all has these rich, fancy kids at it. And she's only a few years older than the hero who is one of the, like, founding members kids and so he can kind of do what he wants and he started kind of torturing this this librarian by like following her and stalking her and one night he actually stalks her to a BDSM club where he finds out that she's a sub and he's immediately intrigued he doesn't know that he's a dominant besides being like a dominant presence and he blackmails her into showing him a little bit about what she's into and that's all I'll say. This is a very short book. I absolutely love this book. This was one of my favorite books of 2020. Um, and I just, I enjoyed it so much because it starts out with him being like, wow, you were manipulating this person into showing you how to have power over them. Like, it's such an interesting mind fuck to like think of that. But the way it plays out was actually extremely sweet and the way that he's like, I thought that I just wanted control, but like this is the kind of control I want. And it, it kind of shows him that a lot of the tendencies he's had and like what he wants, it can actually fit somewhere where it's healthy and I like that. Okay, I won't lie. I like that a lot. My throat's still not up to scratch, so. All right. Then we have The King's Spinster Bride by Ruby Dixon. This is another short one. Um, and this one is great. This one is about um, the princess of Yishrim. Um, and so she saved this eight-year-old barbarian boy's life and spared it. And all this time she's been living in a quiet temple, living out her days. Um, she's not allowed, you know, to like try for the throne because her family was overthrown. And she's basically been living in like a 
what's it called, like a convent. That's where she's been kept at. But now it's been 16 years and this eight-year-old boy is now, what would that make him? 24. And he wants her. Like he's always wanted her since he was young and she saved his life. And now he's going to be the king and he wants her. And so he goes, she thinks that he's there to kill her because, you know, she doesn't expect this eight-year-old boy to remember her. And now that he's taking over, she's like, oh, he's coming to, like, kill the po any possible competition, even though she has no plans for it. And instead, he's like, no, I want you to be my bride because I haven't stopped thinking about you. And in fact, I've been saving myself for 16 years just for you. So yeah, this is another, like, this is a double virgin scenario. And I love it. I love it. It's so cute. It's so quick. Um, it's my favorite thing I've read by Ruby Dixon. I wish that it was even more than it is. This is only 120 pages and it's beautiful. It's perfect. I love it. And then the last one I want to mention, and I'm actually re-mentioning this one because the author gave us a sequel and she never planned to, um, but I guess her like patrons convinced her that we needed a second book and I totally agree with that. So the first one was If She Said Yes by Tasha Harrison and this was a best friend's mom romance, which I just love. I love that. And um Sorry, my brain just like shorted out for a second. Um, this was a best friend's mom romance. And when his best friend is getting married, they go back to, you know, their hometown and he's staying in the house with his friend's mom, who is now like divorced and single. And he, they go for it, basically. They're going to have a fling during the week of this wedding. And then they just are so sucked into it. So this one has like the hero is a bit submissive. Um, the heroine is a, is a bit dommy to him. There's some bondage. There is some edging. There is some like orgasm control, which is really nice. And I loved this first book. I really did. And then I never knew that we were going to get anything else. And then earlier, well, la now I need to say it, last year, it just popped up that she put out another one that's called She Said Yes. And so this book actually picks up like right where the first book ended because it did end with an HEA, but it ended very like abruptly. Like there was no like afterward or like what was going on. It just was like, they're going to be together and that was it. And this follows what happens once they're together. They go on this vacation together. They're exploring their sexuality, seeing how it's going to work. And when they actually tell her son that they're together. So it follows that next steps. And I really, really liked that. And then the last one I want to mention is another best friend's mom, but it is Gracie's mom. So this one was part of like the songs of sin or something. This is by, um, this is by, wow, her name just went out of my head. Misty. This is by Misty Walker. And this one is, this girl is roommates with this guy and their best friends and he has stayed away from her mom because he has the hots for her and now it's his senior year of college and he comes home with her for the holidays and he makes his move on the mom because he's like I'm not gonna be living with your daughter anymore and I want you and she definitely has to struggle with her feelings for him and if it will mess up things with her daughter because guess what her daughter kind of likes him too so that could get awkward. But this was really fun. It was wacky. Don't expect like too much emotional depth from this one. And I say that with love because it's a crazy story. They're based off of songs. You know, what are you kind of expecting out of it, right? You know? So, all right, there you go. Those are 10 more um, recommendations for older women romances. Like I said, you can check out my other video where there will be some that are different from these. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't yet, if you made it to the end, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'll have more videos out for you soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.